So welcome back. In this video, we're going to go through actually building out our loop. So just as a reminder, in the last video, we configured a get account element as a collection to go and find every single account in Salesforce. And that only turns out to be a small number of accounts because we're in a trailhead environment. And then in the, and we also set up a loop in the last video and loops uh, are really just used. You need a collection, but then a loop will let you iterate over each item in the collection. And so if you imagine, um, a filing cabinet, what this get records is doing is filling up the filing cabinets with all the accounts. And then uh, we will use the loop when we open up the filing cabinet, so to speak, uh, for each item in the filing cabinet, that's a key uh, phrase, by the way, for each item in the filing cabinet, we will pull it out and we'll do some sort of uh, logic. And so in this case, I want to do uh, two things to kind of show you what you can do with loops. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to count each account record. And so the way that we need to do that is uh, first by creating a number variable that lets us keep track of how many accounts we've seen. So I'm going to click on the manager here in the toolbox and I'm going to press new resource. And from resource type, I'm going to select a variable. I'm just going to call this uh, count. And this will be uh, a number data type. The decimal places will be zero. And then the default value, and this is really important, is zero. So we are going to create this uh, count number variable, and we're going to set it to be zero when it starts. You can see over here, there's also this option uh, to allow multiple values and turn any variable into a collection. And so in this case, uh, if we did that, then this would be you know, a cardboard box, so to speak, filled with numbers. Um, and that's a little bit beyond the scope of, of this initial loop introduction, but just know that you can turn any variable into a collection by checking that box. And we're not going to do that for this count, but you can do that uh, in other places in your flow building career. So with our count variable created, I'm going to press done. We now have this variable. So uh, the next step is just to use it. And so I'm going to click again here on the elements. And um, why don't I, I'll just do uh, what the way we're going to count it and then I can kind of explain it as we go. So I'm going to drag an assignment element to the canvas next, and you'll see what I'm doing with this in just a second. I'm going to call this uh, assignment increase the count, oops, count by one. And then for the variable values or the thing that I'm assigning, I'm just going to click once, and then I'm going to pick that um, number variable that we just created. I'll select count, and then from operator, I'm going to pick add. So I'm going to add something to this count variable. And as you might imagine, I'm going to manually type in the number one so that for every time the flow uh, reaches this assignment element, it uh, being the flow will add one to the current count. And that's why we wanted the count to be defaulted to zero. So it starts at zero and we just add one to it every time we hit this assignment element. So I'll press done. And now uh, you're going to see the power of loops. So I'm going to now connect the loop to the assignment element. So I'm going to grab the loop, just connect it over. And for um, the loop connector, when you connect it to anything else in the flow, you have two options. And this is why I pointed out the words or phrase for each item in the collection earlier. So the first option when you're connecting a loop is for each item in the collection. And this is what we'll always start with. And this allows you to define the logic that you're going to use as the name implies, for each item in the collection. And so uh, what will happen is that when the loop runs, it will always go down this path, and it will do so one time for each item in your uh, collection variable that you defined in the loop itself. And so here, we're going to do this once, whatever this logic is, we're going to follow this path once for each account that we found. And then we have a second uh, loop connector, which we'll use later, but it says after the last item in the collection. And as you might guess, that just means once once we've hit you know the final record in the collection, what do we do now that we've looped through everything? We can talk about that in a second. So for now, I'll just leave it as for each item in the collection, and I will press done. And we can now see that the uh, loop is increasing the count by one for each item. And so this is really powerful. As you can see, uh, we connected the loop to our assignment, but we can do more than just use an assignment. So if we look over here at the elements, any element over here on the left is allowed to be dragged into a loop. 
Now you don't want to be using data elements inside loops um, that can cause errors in Salesforce. So I'm just gonna minimize this, but you can imagine any of these logical operators can be used inside of a loop. So we can assign uh, field values or update field names by using the assignment. We can do decisions. So we, you know, if this was, you can imagine it's like, is our account based in California? We could have a decision. And then if yes, do one other piece of logic. And if no, do this other piece of logic. And so um, loops are a really powerful way to update records or change the database um, based on your collection. Um, to kind of illustrate this, I'm gonna now drag a screen element to the canvas. And so you can put a screen in the middle of a loop so long as you're using a screen flow. And I'll just call this screen one. And what I'm gonna do here is um, keep things simple by uh, going to the very bottom and just dragging a display text element here onto the canvas. And we'll call it display text one. And so I'm gonna type a message here in the display text that's gonna reference uh, some of the things that our loop is doing. And so I'm gonna say uh, the current account, oops, account name is colon. And then I can click insert a resource and you'll see that if I look for uh, the record single variable here, we can see that the current item from loop was created. And this is another really powerful concept that I want you to understand is that for each item in the collection, a record single variable is created that represents the current item of the loop. And so I'm gonna click that once and you see it's loop through accounts, which is the name of our loop. And this represents whatever account that the loop is currently working on. And then we can pick you know, any of the fields to either update or display or do different things with. And I'm just gonna look for the account name. And so we'll say the current account name is, and then it will show the name of the account that we're currently working with. And then I'm gonna do a, another just text and I'll say, and the current count is, I'll do a colon. And then I'm gonna insert uh, that variable, the count. And then we can make these bold, I guess. And perhaps increase the size to be like 20 or something big. So that kind of looks big over here on the right, but over here on the left, it, it looks, I guess, more readable. So let's press done. And now we will connect our assignment to our screen. And finally, this is really important, is that a loop, once you've defined the logic that you want it to follow, you need to then connect it back to the start of the loop. And this is why the loop kind of gets its name. You can see that the loop icon kind of has this arrow that's like going in a circle over and over and over. And so that's what we need to uh, set up here inside the flow. And if you're doing this on the auto layout, it'll probably do that for you. But just know that a loop kind of has a starting path where for each item, you're gonna do some logic. And then once you have defined that logic, you need to route your flow back to the loop so that it can continue onto the next item. I'm gonna press save. And what we're gonna do now is just debug uh, this flow so you can see how it's working on each account. So I'll press debug. And so um, as you'll remember, our flow is gonna get every single account and then it's gonna start the loop. And then the first step in the loop is to um, increase the count by one and then show us that screen. So here on the uh, screen page, I guess we can see what's happened in the flow so far. So on the right hand side, we successfully found every account in Salesforce and we get this big long list here of account IDs. So by default, uh, the get element will only store account IDs, but if you need to reference any of the fields, so long as you say automatically store all the fields in your get records, uh, they will all be accessible to you. And then our loop begins. So we see, you know, we have a bunch of items here and then it starts on iteration zero. So um, loops start at zero rather than one. So just keep that in mind, but it will show you, okay, we're at iteration zero and this is the current ID we're working on. And then we increase the count by one because that's, that's what our logic is doing. And then we show the screen and on the screen, it shows the current account name and that's the current item in the loop. And then we increment the count by one and we show that here. So if I press next, what will happen if we go back is that our uh, flow will route back to the loop and then we will go on to the next item in the collection. And so uh, let's do that now. I'm gonna press next. And you see that the current account name changes 
And so we're now showing the name of the current item in the loop, which is edge communications. And uh, the current count is now two. And if you look over here on the right, you'll see that our screen uh, was shown and that we went back to the loop and the iteration increased from zero to one. We have a new ID in here as the current iteration item and you know the same assignment element ran as before and we're seeing that same screen. And so if I press next again, we go to the next account, which is Burlington Textiles Corp of America. And the current count is three. And again, if we look at the you know debug details on the right, you'll see that our screen uh, showed for the previous account and then it looped and then the, the iteration went up and the ID changed and the count went up. And so I can press this button a number of times and we'll just iterate effectively through every single account in Salesforce because that's what our get elements was set up as. If you defined your get elements to be just the accounts in California or just closed lost opportunities, that's all that the loop would iterate over. So again, these accounts are being um, shown because they were part of that uh, get records collection that we defined. So I'll go all the way through because I already did this once before I filmed this. <laughs> I know there's 15 accounts and you can kind of see where we're getting towards the tail end. Oops, I went back. So I'll just go next, next. And so this is the, the last um, account is Appleseed Incorporated and the current count is 15. And so when I press next, it's just gonna say all done. And that means that we finished iterating over each item in the collection. And so back here on our uh, screen flow, this is where we would define that secondary path, which is called after each item or after the final item in the collection, do some update. And we'll do that in the next video. So I'll see you there.